Alright mates, how's it going? In today's video, chapter 26 of Shadows Rising by Madeline Rue. There's still like six chapters and an epilogue left after this, but I guess we're getting pretty close to the end now. How exciting. Let's go! Did you have your fun? Sarah Moon Warden scoffed at Blightcaller's words. Fun? She didn't know the meaning of the word anymore. Not since she'd rose anew in undeath. Although, she couldn't deny that she was a little bit excited. The shrines had fallen, the widow's bite's numbers had grown even larger, and their spirit was at an all-time high. All that remained was the final assault on the necropolis, and then their task would be complete, and Sira could finally leave Wretched Zandalar and never look back. Those theatrics with the children. I trust that sated your bloodlust for the moment. I never took you for a man with a weak stomach, Blycaller. Nathanos then rolled his eyes. You risk galvanizing the Zandalari to greater purpose. Our plans have proceeded nicely because the Queen is isolated. Grant her a few Orc battalions and our odds change significantly. They have lost. The storms will cut off any reinforcements by sea, and our traps will slow any soldiers arriving by land. Is this not the hell our Queen seeks to correct? Is this not the hell she will save us from? Teldrassil burned, Darkshaw burned. I assure you far more than two screaming brats were killed on those occasions. Yes, Syrah, you've made your point. Ah, here comes Visrin. Dark Rangers Visrin and Leliaius then approached. They'd gone ahead to scout and stuff. There's a small standing force. The Queen must have sent them, but we have the greater number. They don't stand a chance, sir. The camp is largely pilgrims. We could take prisoners and forego bloodshed. Sira then fidgeted and looked a bit displeased. You have thoughts, Sira. They should suffer as we suffer. And life's only pleasure is to spill blood before a loon. The goddess did not save me. I wonder, will anyone come to save this lower? Nathanos then removed his glove and gave a short whistle, causing a Pari and Teo to approach. The distinct odour of infection came with them, and Sira could see the other widow's bite followers visibly keeping their distance from a Pari and trying desperately not to hold their noses. The ruins are ours to take. Prepare yourselves. I shall tolerate a short rest after we secure the ruins. And so, Visrin, Leliaeus, and a whole bunch of rebels swarmed to the east. You do not look well. Leliaeus is a skilled healer. She could ease the pain in your leg. No, that will not be necessary. Teo flinched at that. Why the bloody hell was Apari being so goddamned proud and stubborn about her shit monkey leg? We need you to survive until the lower is no more. That is all I live to see. One Sandy's end and the traitor queen powerless. Startled shouts then rose from the ruins as the ambush started. The rebels and dark rangers overran the small encampment pretty quickly, since they were mostly civilians. Not much of a prize for your mistress. But then everything in this jungle is pathetic. Every victory we hand her matters. I claim this one with pride, just as I will claim the necropolis and destroy one Sandy. He will no longer be a threat to Sylvanas. Little stands in her way now. And soon, nothing will. Nothing ever stands in her way for long. A short time later, the rebels, Apari and Teo included, had found some corner within the ruins and were catching some much-needed shut-eye. The Thanos and the Dark Rangers, however, had no use for sleep. As Blightcaller observed Apari, he could see the tarnished badge he'd given her glinting around her neck. Many times he'd considered taking it back, either sneaky-like or by force. But each time, he'd heard the lovely voice of the Banshee Queen at the back of his mind urging him to let go of such things. Trinkets and trifles, the unimportant relics of life. His loyalty to Sylvanas did not hinge on such things, so he just sort of wandered off towards the broken bridge that once joined the ruins to the necropolis. He always felt restless on the eve of battle, but this time felt a bit different. Some nagging feeling at the back of his mind, like a faint memory was trying to claw its way out of his subconscious. He had things to do, a letter to write to Sylvanas to let her know of their progress, but something was drawing him forward into the mist. And then, a gold coin appeared out of nowhere and splashed into a puddle near his feet. Hello, Nathanos. Nathanos bent down and picked up the gold coin and felt the familiar emblem etched into it with his thumb. You're not real. You died a long time ago. Before him stood his cousin, Stefan Maris, who had indeed died a long time ago, ending up as nothing more than a pile of goo on a table, after his body became the raw materials used to build Nathanos anew. Why did you let her do it? I was your cousin, Nathanos. I looked up to you. I wanted to be you, but not like this. I had no choice. Nathanos couldn't even look his cousin in the eyes, but continued. I needed a new body, so you stole mine. That was Sylvanas' decision. 
I could not be made whole without the sacrifice of a family member. And yet still you serve her. After what she did to me. After what she did to our family. I'm the only ghost that moves you. But how many ghosts have you given others? How many men now live tormented by the loved ones you murdered in service to your vicious queen? Stefan's expression then changed. No longer friendly. And an odd blue light started to suffuse his skin. Your queen has made some nasty friends on the other side. The power she's been granted can be taken away. The Lords of Death will never let her win. Her power is nothing next to theirs. If she is chained to undeath, she is chained to the forces of the Shadowlands. You know nothing of it. You do not know her as I do. Stefan's face then dissolved completely into a hideous grinning skull. And it was at that point that Nathanos realised this was nothing more than trickery and magic. One Sandy, of course. You're in my world now, boy. This be my game, and you be playing it by my rules. You're finished, Bon Sandy. Yeah, we'll be seeing about that. And with that, Bon Sandy, or the vision he'd sent, vanished. And Nathanos, who had absolutely been triggered by that whole exchange, stomped his way back to the ruins. And we're leaving it there! Nice little moment there. I liked that. Can't help but smirk a little bit at the idea of Bon Sandy trolling Nathanos. But it's also a nice little callback to that story about how Nathanos and Sylvanas banged that one time. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying this book. Also there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!